the benchmarks that it offers uh, relative to other countries enable politicians to look at their own country's performance, see those areas in which they are not so, uh, not performing uh, up to standard perhaps, uh, those areas in which they are doing well, why they are doing well. Uh, so I think it's a really a, a unique tool to enable them to understand their own performance better. However you look at it, innovation I think is at the heart of the contemporary economy. Uh, this year, every year we focus in the Global Innovation Index on a particular theme. This year the theme is the human factor in innovation and uh, we all know that human capital is absolutely essential to a vibrant and healthy and effective innovation ecosystem. Uh, and I think one of the things that we're seeing with innovation generally in the world is that uh, because of its importance, more and more competitive behaviour is focused on innovation. And we see that also with respect to uh, human capital. So, for example, 60% of the engineers in Silicon Valley are foreign born, or roughly 30% of Nobel laureates won the Nobel Prize when they were resident outside their country of origin. So we see enormous competition to attract uh, human resources and human capital to improve innovation performance around the world. The reason why we have intellectual property is, well, it's manifold. It's to, uh, first of all, to create an incentive to invest in the production of new knowledge, new uh, and that is a very expensive thing with modern science and technology. Uh, so we need to create that, that uh, incentive. Uh, and the incentive is created through intellectual property. Intellectual property also offers a framework for the long and often hazardous journey of an idea from conception to uh, commercial product or service. Uh, and innovation also, uh, intellectual property also provides the basis of a marketplace for technology to trade ideas, actually. So it's an essential part of the innovation ecosystem. Of course, Australia is the host country of the G20 this year. But it's an opportunity, first of all, for me to thank the Australian government uh, for its support for this launch in Australia. Why have we done it? Well, uh, if you look carefully at the aspirations of uh, Australia as the host of the G20, you see that innovation figures as a theme, I think, that you can read into many of the concrete objectives uh, and outcomes that are sought to be achieved uh, in the G20 this year. So we think it's very important to uh, bring innovation and this unique tool for measuring and ultimately improving innovation performance to the attention of policymakers at the very highest level.